Happy Monday, Floss Tube. It is Monday, January 13th today. 13th today. My name is Caroline. This is uh, my channel about mostly about cross stitch. Welcome. Thank you for uh, for joining me today. If you're brand new, welcome. And if you're returning, thanks for coming back to hang out with me. I have. Uh, I didn't cut my hair. I always get messages when I wear my hair up. Did you cut your hair? Looks like you cut your hair. I didn't cut my hair. It's just super messy today and it's a big sewing day for me today. Uh, so I also can't wash it every day. Otherwise it looks like a big mushroom head. So uh, <laughs> more than you needed to know. It's just up in a clip and it's, uh, it's just different. I didn't get it all chopped off. So, um, I have a lot to share today. I'm looking around and I have a lot to share. So I may have to record this video in, in two parts because I also have the flute choir coming over for rehearsal um, around, uh, just adjust my, there we go. Uh, flute choir is coming for rehearsal and they usually arrive around quarter to two and it is already 1230 and I still need to do the dishes before they get here. So, uh, I will probably have to split this in half. I also have pulled all of the names for the Muscular Dystrophy Canada raffle that I um, am offering for everyone who directly donated to Muscular Dystrophy Canada in the month of December. And I even had one or two um, into the beginning of January. Totally counts. It's all good. And uh, so, I will do that after after we talk about crafting and happy mail and stuff like that first. So, whew, it's been a week. It has been a week. So, um, crafting, crafting related. First thing we wanna start with is our Because Monday giveaway. This is a draw that I hold every week on Monday and you can enter this draw over on the Facebook group where it's, call, it's called Friday Off The Grid. Friday Off The Grid Facebook group. If you join us over there, it's a rather large group, rather busy group, full of stitching. It is 99.9% .9 stitching related. We try really hard to keep it stitching related. Um, if, you know, sort of general house rules are, if it's not about stitching, post it somewhere else. We also, you know, golden rule, keep it kind. So uh, I find that it is a rather lovely little corner of the internet. So you are welcome to join us over there. This is where you can find the giveaway. Last Monday's giveaway was very generously donated and sent to me by Judy H. And this is a copy of the Sampler Company's Little Red House uh, sampler. This is a stitch along that, uh, well, it's, it's, it's a piece that a lot of people are stitching. Um, but Brian Blitz Stitch began a stitch along on January 1st and I jumped right in and I also started this. This was my new year, new start for 2020. So I have not stitched on it since the 1st of January. However, it will make its way back into my rotation soon. Soon. So, oh, I guess I should tell you who won. I had 319 comments on that post. Clearly, it's it's a desirable pattern. Uh, the random number generator chose comment number 191, who was Mary Ellen Kinkle. So congratulations, Mary Ellen. You are the lucky winner. I'm just waiting for the thread card to um, arrive for that. Uh, Judy had sent me the one that she'd opened up and taken the thread card out of, and she had two copies, one for herself and I don't remember how she ended up with two copies. That's neither here nor there. The upshot for you is that you get a copy, um, but the thread card was out, so she's mailing that to me separately. It's coming, and when I get it, I'll put it out in the mail to you, so congratulations. New drawing up for this week. This is really pretty. This is super, super pretty. Okay, so uh, at the end of last, summer I finally met uh, an online friend who sort of lives on the way in one of the small towns that's how I drive to get to our uh, cottage and so her name is Shell 
and she's uh, an active member of the Facebook group. And when we met, she had a package of, of um, charts for me. And she said, these are yours to do with what you want um, for giveaways, etc., and so forth. And there were some really beautiful things in there. I think I've only given away one or two of the package from the package that Shell gave me. So I thought today was a great opportunity to start to, to hand out another one because, well, they need to go out into the world. They're beautiful. They need to be stitched. This is a Victoria Sampler piece. So this is, I would say, this is maybe not for beginners. If you are a brand new stitcher, a pattern like this would probably um, be overwhelming. There is a lot of specialty stitches in this pattern. However, if you're brave, there is nothing that you can't achieve with the beauty of YouTube and a few crafty friends. So if you've absolutely fallen in love with this pattern, you're capable of anything. So believe in yourself. If you love the pattern, go ahead and enter it. I'm just telling you up front. I'm not going to say this is easy peasy. This is going to require some work if you've never done specialty stitches before. But I think you'll agree that the end result will be worth it. So this is the cottage garden from the Victoria Sampler. And it is stunning. So you can see all of these different bands. It's a sampler band. All of these bands are different specialty stitches. The way down to the bottom, this beautiful archway in the bottom and that cottage at the top. It's so sweet. It's a lovely, lovely chart. So this is the chart up for giveaway this week on the Facebook group and you can find it over there. I will post this this evening. I have a feeling that this video probably won't be up until late tonight. So I'll do my best. Oh, it's so beautiful. <clears throat> and actually, <coughs> excuse me, the instructions in here are quite good. Uh, as a starting point and then if if you're more of a visual learner YouTube is amazing truly amazing I know that um, you, you know many of our floss tubers have have uh, tutorial videos up um, easy to find very useful okay so that's the first giveaway for today I have a lot more giveaways today but they're all for the raffle so I'll save those to the end of the video for today I'm going to show you my whips next. I obviously don't have any finishes because, and if you're new here, um, you're about to find out that I am not a monogamous stitcher. I have numerous whips. It's, an, it's the main reason why the podcast is called From the Stash Pile. I have a substantial uh, pile of whips, and this year I'm focusing on my large um, large scale projects and BAPs as it were. And, uh, I've decided to do a 24 hour rotation on my projects. So the first 24 hours of 2020, I kind of started in at the very end of 2019, but, uh, continued into 2020. I just last night completed my very first 24 hour dedicated, like what I mean is it's not like I just say, oh, for the next day, I'm going to stitch this. No, it's I set my timer and when I am actively stitching, the timer is going so that it's 24 actual physical hours of time. I know time isn't a physical thing. You, you know what I mean, right? I know you know what I mean. And um, so then I have actually, I can actually see substantial progress. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screen capture from when I showed this on the podcast last week, so I'm gonna to have to remember to do that. And if I, if I have, if I can't find that video clip, then I will, uh, I'll, I'll find the most recent picture from the time of a week ago, from the last time you saw it. And, uh, and I'll insert that picture here. So after 24 hours, complete and total stitching time, here's where I am now. 
Whew. I didn't quite make it to halfway. Halfway is here. But I'm darn close. And I think that for 24 hours of stitching, that's pretty darn good progress. So I am thrilled. Now you can see the colors a bit better there. This is uh, stitched on a 16 count off-white Ada and two strands of floss and I'm using the called for DMC. It would help if I told you the name of the pattern. This is uh, a chart by Landmark Tapestries and Charts. This is the Savan pattern, S-E-V-A-N. Uh, it's from the Tapesta Pillow Collection and the best and easiest place to find this pattern because apparently it is back in stock. You can find it at www.celtichobbies.com and I'll leave a link to that in the drop down box below. The owner of that shop is Claire and she is lovely. And not only is this pattern back in stock, now I'm hoping that it's still back in stock because I have mentioned in a few different places that it was back in stock, so hopefully it's not sold out again. However, uh, as far as I know, Claire had like 20 copies and every copy she sold, she was going to send a dollar to Muscular Dystrophy Canada because that's how awesome Claire is. So thank you, Claire. And if you're looking for a copy of this, I, I'm telling you, that's pretty much your only bet. It's your safest bet, one of the only places that I've ever seen that sells these charts. And once you go down the landmark tapestries and charts rabbit hole, you're welcome. <laughs> I love stitching these designs. I can't tell you, I, I, I've, I have told you before, many times in the past, they are just wonderful to stitch. Now, I have to say, when I started stitching last night, I thought, I don't really want to stop. I don't really want this to be the end of my 24 hours, but I actually put in four hours of stitching time last night. And by the end of it, I did think I was really super satisfied with my progress, but I was starting to think about Amtrak a lot in the last hour. I was starting to get excited about moving over to my next project. So I think that really showed me that I think I've picked a really good quantitative, you know, is that the right word to use for this? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an amount, right? I've used the right amount of time for myself to keep my interest high, see some substantial progress, and then move on. So Savon is now going away. I was chatting with Ellen last night, uh, Maximum Cross Stitch Power Hour. If you haven't watched her, she's a ton of fun. She's also a singer and keyboardist in the band The Crash Test Dummies, which is a Canadian institution um, if you're into uh, music. Then uh, Ellen is a stitcher. She's a she's an amazing stitcher. I'm sure you've all heard of her. So, But I'm just telling you, if you're brand new to stitching and you're brand new to floss tube, you can go check out Ellen Maximum Cross Stitch Power Hour. And we've become friends because you know, I still, I still can't believe that I'm friends with Ellen Reed of the Crash Test Dummies. It's still, it's still a little unreal. And did you see the t-shirt she was wearing in the, if you haven't, you have to go and, and I'm, that's all I'm going to tell you because if you haven't seen it, you have to go and watch it. Her last episode the shirt that she's wearing that's all I'm gonna say it's fabulous it's fabulous so we were chatting and I showed her a picture of she asked what I was working on and I sent her a picture of Savon and because oh she just finished her um, his eyes on the sparrow she's like the fastest stitcher I've ever met for real is she, I think it took her three months. His eyes, his eyes on the sparrow. Have you seen the size of that? And the only reason it's not a complete finish because she ran out of one color of floss and so she hasn't finished the words yet, but she's close. I mean, once she gets a skein of floss, she'll be, it'll take her an hour, she'll be done. Three months to stitch his eyes on the sparrow. I mean, that's, that's fast. 
So anyways, what was I saying? Right. She asked me what I was stitching, so I sent her a picture of Savan. And she said, oh, you'll be finished that by what? Like the end of February? <laughs> and I laughed, and I laughed, and I laughed. Oh, Ellen. <laughs> No, <laughs> no, I don't know when I'm going to bring it back out again because I have so many things that I want to work on that I want to see substantial progress on. And I'm really happy with that for now. I'm sure I will pull it out again at some point this year. I, I was thinking, oh, maybe by the end of April, but I don't know. I don't know because this is what's coming up next. So which way should I show it to you this time? This way? This is Amtrak by Sampler Cove and it's available, it's available in a few different places online um, to purchase the chart or you could call your local needle workshop and see if they can get it in for you. And it only has, it only uses three colors. I am not using the called for colors though these are the colors in the chart, a blue, a red and a gray. I chose three silks from um, a dyer at the time, Vicki Clayton, who was selling silk floss when I kitted this up like a hundred years ago. Not literally, you know what I mean. Um, and it's, I, I'm in love with it. So tonight, this is going back on my floor frame and I'm going to start working on it again. This, the chart to this, I got really lucky with this piece, let me tell you this little story and I think I've told this story before I had this rolled up on the scroll rods a few years back um, getting ready to to work on it again and I had the pattern and I had my floss and my piece all rolled up and it was sitting on the uh, coffee table in the living room and I tipped over my glass of red wine that was right beside it and do you know I got so lucky because I didn't get a drop on my floss or my project but I got a fair bit on the pattern itself and then I was like oh no I'm gonna have to rebuy the pattern however it dried out you can still read the pattern so I will show you that next week I will show you the pattern but I'll show you the back of the pattern where you can see the uh, the evidence of my folly. So yeah, don't keep a glass of red wine next to your stitching. Not a good idea. Oh, I love it. I love it, love it, love it so much. It's just so delicate and beautiful. Um, right, you want the details? This is, what did I say it was last week? I think it's a 25 count even weave. Yeah, that's what it is. It's not 28. I'm pretty positive it's 25. Uh, one over one, one strand of thread over one hole. And yeah, the bottom half is actually, these motifs are, are different. Yeah, each of these four um, borders are different, but you could literally hang it whichever way you like it best, right? Doesn't matter. That's the beauty of these designs. There's no right way up. You get to decide. So when I put it back on my frame, I am going to orient it this way so that I'm working down, I think. I haven't decided yet. I have to look at the pattern and decide where I want to start. However, this is the beginning of my next 24 hours of Amtrak. So that's exciting. That's very exciting. And hopefully next week I'll have some uh, progress to show you. I will also be working on it during a Friday After Grid Stitch With Me video. I didn't put out a video on Friday. I'm, I'm really sorry about that. I had a lot of work to do last week to finish up the uh, sale bags that sold in the shop at the end of December so that I could get those out in a timely manner. And I was I was still uh, 
four or five days longer than I usually like to take getting uh, orders out. So I wanted to make sure that they were all out in the post by Friday. So I was a bit pooped by the time Friday afternoon rolled around and uh, the family was around and everything. And so I just, uh, I took, I didn't do a video. And, and I, it felt really weird. It really did feel weird because you know, when you're trying to get back into that routine and Friday routine is, I chat with you and it didn't happen. So this week it'll happen and I will be working on Amtrak and I hope you like it. I sure do. Uh, it's been a while since I worked on Amtrak on a Stitch With Me video, so I'm hoping that I can figure out the my vision and the camera angle because it's so small. Anyways, I'm holding something in my hand to share with you because I received some Stitchy Mail. Happy Stitchy Mail to, to, from two different friends of... Um, in the last week. So let me show the first one first because this is, it's all loaded up with my stuff from Savan. So I wanted to show you how I've been using it. So in December, uh, Michelle, who runs auctions every week, um, benefiting a charity monthly, this month is benefiting Parkinson's, uh, the Michael J. Fox Parkinson Research Foundation and um, you can find out all about the items that are up for auction on her videos and you need to follow her follow her on instagram to be able to uh, bid on those items 100 percent 100 percent of all of the money that you bid and and pay for those items is donated 100 percent not even you know there's no money taken off for postage or fees or anything like that, 100%, because you donate directly to the charity and then send proof of your donation to Michelle, who then mails you the item. So there's no middleman. All of that money goes directly to, um, you know, a very worthy cause. So in December, Michelle was helping me raise money for Muscular Dystrophy Canada, and uh, there was a milk glass candy dish up for auction and I kind of loved it and I bid on it a few times but I lost out and um, Cheryl messaged me and amazingly generously said I have two would you like one and she mailed one to me she she actually mailed one to me so Cheryl I wanted you to see that your beautiful milk di milk milk glass excuse me milk glass candy dish is now at home in my stitching spot forever and ever so this i this i i filled it with my savon dmc you can see that there it's so beautiful isn't it beauty it's just so pretty so pretty so it's got my floss for Savon and then you know if you've you've seen these before you've you know the, the holes are on the outside I had two other pairs of scissors in here but um, well I think my kids took them somewhere even though they know they're not supposed to use these scissors they know it so it was probably to cut a thread on something or the tag off a shirt something like that so now that I'm ready to go to Amtrak I can put my Savon colors back in my, where is it? Is there some, oh, it's, it's right over there. Notions pouch that goes with Savon and put my Amtrak colors in there. And this sits right beside my stitching chair and it's in the living room and it's just pretty. It's just pretty. So Cheryl, thank you so much for sending me such a lovely little stitching item that I can use and will love forever. So thank you. Uh, okay, the other thing that I received in the mail, and I knew something was coming because uh, Carrie, the creative curator, had messaged me and she said, be on the lookout for a little package coming from Australia. I, I sent you something. Um, now, it didn't quite get here in time for Christmas, but it was coming all the way from Australia. So I think that that's, uh, that's A-OK. -okay. And wait till you see 
this card. Look at this card. Isn't that adorable? It's beautiful. And side note, thank you to everyone on last week's video who sent me messages um, about the information that I had left on the on where you can uh, help, where you can donate, put money towards uh, helping Australia, the wildfires in Australia. I would invite you to go and read the comments, especially all of them, read through the comments because there were some amazing comments from Australians um, describing the situation for themselves, for their friends, for their family. Uh, and it's uh, it's quite something. So if you donated money last week to any of the Australian uh, causes, thank you kindly. I sent some money to the Red Cross. <sighs> so along with Carrie's amazingly sweet Christmas card, Carrie makes chain mail accoutrement. That's the perfect word because and, and I always think of Michelle Bendy when I say that word. And I don't say that word often, but it's probably because I was just talking about Michelle and she uses that word frequently when she's describing her auction items. They come with all the accoutrements. So M Carrie makes just the most amazing things. I sold a scissor fob of hers. I put it with the summer kit last year from Evertote and it, it had a little bee charm in it and they are chain mail uh, items and then she puts beads inside them, captured beads, and there are charms on them. She makes scissor fobs, zipper pulls, ornaments, jewelry, you name it. She has an Etsy shop and I'm going to put a link in the drop down box below to Carrie's shop because she's talented. She is talented and the shipping from Australia is not super expensive for such a small thing and her items are amazing. She made me a Christmas ornament. So you have to, I have to show this close up. So I'm really hoping that it's not going to take too long to focus because this, look at that. Isn't that stunning? Look at the large red bead in the center. And all of those, all of those individual rings, jump rings, that she has manipulated into such a stunning design. Can you believe it? I mean, that is just phenomenal. It's stunning. Oh my goodness. Now she also sent me and I absolutely love this. And I'm hoping I can convince her. Uh, spoiler alert, you may see these zipper pulls on a, on a future kit. I'm not telling you when, but I absolutely love these. I'm not sure you can see the detail on the wooden bead, but if I turn it, yeah, there you go. Look at that. It's so pretty. So, so pretty. I love it. Carrie, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I am not, I'm not going to put that away in my Christmas box. I'm actually going to find a little special place to hang this year round. Because that's, that's more than a Christmas ornament. I love it. I love it. Happy mail indeed. Okay. Uh... The other thing I've been working on is my father-in-law's sock. So, proof of progress. Uh, last week, you can see I have, last week I'd picked up all the stitches and that's where I was at. I was right at the, I had the stage where I had picked up all the stitches from my heel flap. And now I have started my uh, gusset decreases and I'm well on my way to finishing those up and then zooming down the sock. So, will they be done in February? In all honesty, probably not. However, he doesn't get home until the end of March. So, new deadline. 
<laughs> new deadline you know knitting too much on these it this small those small needles it's really aggravating my thumb so I've been taking it when I overdo it as long as I don't overdo it if I only knit about four or five rounds totally fine so if I try to knit four or five rounds in the morning and four or five rounds at night um, you know it's not super speedy progress but it'll get done so yeah pretty pleased with that so that's on its way proof of progress okay so that is it for uh, regular floss tube stuff it is now 105 so I'm, I probably I've got a bit of editing to do and all the jumbled up stuff that I've been talking about already uh, but I really should go and clean up the kitchen and move the car and do all that kind of stuff. We have a, a circular driveway, so I, tr I don't always manage to do it, but sometimes if it's a little bit, it's a little bit icy out there, so I wanna make sure that the ladies can park as close to the door as possible. So I'm just gonna go and move my, my car so that they can get around. I also have, let's be honest here, I have the poinsettia from Christmas <laughs> sitting out on my porch because I couldn't look at it anymore because it, it was at that point poinsettias get to where they've lost most of their foliage. They're not dead yet. They've lost most of their foliage. So they kind of look really spindly and pathetic and I just couldn't look at it anymore. So I opened up the door and I just put it outside. <laughs> forgot about it so and we don't often use that front door we usually there's a we have a side front door that we always use that we go in and out of I totally forgot that the poinsettia was still on the porch until I got a delivery this morning from um, a fabric company in so the the purulator guy rang the doorbell and I went to go and get the box from the front porch and I thought oh the poinsettia is still there time to move that thing so I am going to go and get ready, coach flute choir, and then I will come back and do the raffle, which is super exciting and fun. I've actually, I've already pulled the names. Uh, as you know, I put in a clip at the beginning that I did random, I had 18 prizes to give away, did random number generator for all 18 names. I've chosen all the names. And so I'm going to just talk a little bit afterwards. I also will talk a little bit about um, shop update afterwards. So uh, if you want to come back, I'm going to put in a little ad from YouTube here. So don't be surprised if that pops in and then uh, we'll chat. So for you, it'll only be about 30 seconds. For me, it's going to be about two hours. So I'll see you in two hours. Okay. Be right back. I'm back it's been it's been almost uh, it's been just over two hours it's quarter after three and Nicholas is gonna be home from school soon so I'm going to try and um, give the raffle prizes away now so let me put my coffee somewhere safe and we will begin that's not safe I think it's safer on the floor under my ironing board at the moment. Then I can't kick it over and I can't knock it over onto all of the goodies that I've got here on the table today. Okay, so the raffle. I had 111 emails sent directly to me saying with the subject line, I donated to MDC. And uh, I have 18 prizes to give away. So I chose... Uh, 18 numbers from the random number generator right off the top of the bat and I sh I believe if all goes well with my editing I should have a clip of the piece of paper with all 18 of those numbers being chosen and then I had to go into the list of emails and counting from the oldest ones to the newest ones. so if you donated um, and believe it or not number one was chosen so the very first person who donated you were number one and you won a prize okay so let me go through the list uh, the first there were two people who won 
who whose email was chosen. First of all, Krista Gramer. Krista Gramer is the designer behind uh, Just Stitching Along. And Krista actually has donated two of the prizes that I'm giving away today. The uh, Lucy Calcut charts. Let me just show those to you. So you'll see them now and you'll see them again in a minute when I give them away to the winner. These are mine. Uh, Krista is going to be mailing the winners their chart directly, but these ones are mine, which I purchased from Traditional Stitches here in Canada. Uh, so Krista won. Krista also donated. She made a direct donation as well as donating a prize. And Krista was number, uh, where are you Krista? Number 37. So Krista, I'm going to send you a bag. I, you, I, I didn't think you would want one of your own patterns. <laughs> and you're a designer and obviously you like samplers. And so I thought, why don't I send you a bag? And that way it's a thank you from me as well. So Krista, you are one of the winners of the project bags from me at um, Evertote. Okay, the other person who won that I already know what I'm going to send you was number 82, who was Kathy Green. So congratulations, Kathy Green. Uh, and the reason why I'm singling you out is because in your email, you mentioned that you were a new stitcher. And could I recommend any, you know, easy kits or charts, something for you to try? Well, guess what? I actually happen to have as one of the prizes that I picked, it was actually a full little kit. This Sam Sarah chart, so it's, um, you know, it might not be your favorite subject matter or subject matter, get that, it's reading, haha. -ha. I know that was terrible, I'm sorry. I'll just apologize now. Um, but it is, an, it's a straightforward, not too difficult pattern. And I think it might be a good, a good place to get some practice. And it comes with, everything that you need to stitch it. So all the threads, the fabric, and that cute little apple uh, button that's right there. So Kathy, since you mentioned, since you asked me a question and I didn't answer your question, because I'm gonna be honest with you, I, I read these emails briefly as they came in, but a lot of time it was throughout the month of December when Christmas was happening and busyness was happening. And so I did not, I didn't really respond. I just kind of collected the emails I read them, I took note, um, but I didn't go back in and answer them. So Kathy, I apologize for not answering you at the time. However, you were one of the winners chosen, and so I'm going to send you this because I know that you're a new stitcher and that's what you were interested in. So congratulations. Okay, now all of the other winners, the next group of nine winners have all won a small project bag from me. The 10th one is going to Krista. And so what those are, it's a small, and it is in one of my absolutely favorite fabrics. I hope you love it. It's my blue paisley that I did my very first ever tote kit uh, two summers ago. So not, it was 2018. And I still have a fair bit of this print because as is my usual mode of operation, I tend to overbuy things. So um, it is, it, Trust me, it's been kept well sealed. It's clean. It's it's not like old fabric. It's <laughs> I'm selling these well, aren't I? Because guess what? There's some in the shop too. But um, this is the prize. There are ten of these that I'm sending away. Krista, you've won one. And now the next pe the next nine people that I list, you are going to receive one of these project bags from me as well. Okay, so. The first number that was chosen was comment number 15, sorry, email number 15, and that was Deborah Allwart. So congratulations. Um, now I'm not going to edit the names in on the screen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say your name and then I'm going to email you um, from the email that you sent me and we'll do it that way. Next one who, the next person, congratulations Deborah, you're getting a bag. Uh, the next one is Penny Real, Penny Art, and it's R-E-I-L. I know you know who I mean because we've spoken before. Congratulations, Penny. You're getting a bag, yay. 
Next up was comment number 105, who is Agatha Donald. And guess what? Agatha is a new viewer and she lives near me. I get to meet a new stitcher. Hopefully, hopefully, you know, she'll agree to meet me somewhere. Do you want to go for a coffee, Agatha? Maybe we can go for a coffee and I'll give you your bag. Uh, okay, next up is number 25, who is Robin Laderoot. And Robin, I know your name well. You also are winning a project bag. Now, this next one's funny. The next one is number 21. And when I went in to find out who was lucky number 21, guess who it was? Letitia Beckett, the crafty curator, her very self. She also donated to MDC and sent me an email. So guess what, Letitia? You win a bag too. Next up was number 75, who was Jerry Ann Holdaway. Jerry Ann Holdaway. You win a bag. You win a bag and you win a bag. <laughs> I know, it's still fun. Okay, and the, there's two more, three more. Uh, no, comment, comment. See, I'm used to Because Monday. Email number five, which was Jennifer Love. You win a bag. Now, side note, Jennifer. I don't know if you're the same Jennifer, but you're probably not. I knew a Jennifer Love when I was in grade five. And I had just changed schools. I went to a brand new school. And the most, I was just sitting in my classroom for the first time. I didn't know anyone you know, new kid, new class, new school. I didn't know anyone. And the most beautiful girl I'd ever seen in my whole life. And she was so tall and she looked, she was, she looked like the teacher. She was just, she looked older than everybody else. She was so beautiful. And I thought, wow, she's, she's, I want to be her friend. <laughs> Cause she just looked older than everybody else. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? There's the, there, there are those people that you're just drawn to and you think, oh, I just want to get to know them. And her name was Jennifer Love. So go figure. Was that you? Are we going to be best friends now? I'm not creepy. I promise. <laughs> I don't know. Oh my goodness. I think I need some more coffee or something. Something, 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 something. Okay. After Jennifer, we had email number 54 which was Annie. And Annie, I don't have a last name for you, but I know your email address, uh, your email tag is Miss Annie. Miss Annie one, you win a project bag. There, that's right tied up. And last but not least for the one of the 10 project bags that I'm sending out is, was, was email number 81, which was Felicia Michael. So congratulations, Felicia. You are also getting a project bag. So again, I am going to be emailing you all and letting you know that you've won and then you can send me your mailing address to my email and then I will get these out in the mail. I'm hoping by the end of the week. That's my goal. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, this was good. Remember I told you number one, the, my very first uh, person who donated? The random number generator chose comment number one. So the prize that was ch was chosen for you, Elaine Martell, thank you for being the very first person to donate and email me. You have won in the raffle a Lizzie Kate farm fob. So this adorable pattern comes with the fabric, the beads, and the rickrack. I don't think the floss is in there. Pretty sure. The fabric, the beads, and the rickrack. So everything that you'll need for FFOing it into something beautiful. It's really, really cute. So these little barnyard farm fob. So congratulations, Elaine Martel. That one's for you. Next up, we have um, this Lizzie Kate. Uh, giggle boxer today was a total waste of makeup and that went to email number 108 and that was Ida now Ida I think your last name is Kimbriel uh, you sent it from an email address where the last name was Kimbriel so I, I'm going to say Ida Kimbriel but I again will reply to the email that you sent to me so thank you you are the winner of the giggle boxer
Okay, uh, email number 99 was uh, Kathy Ring. So congratulations, Kathy Ring. I am sending you this adorable little bead project. It's an owl and it's completely beaded. Well, no, I lie. It's not completely beaded. It's one of those Mill Hill. It's stitched and beads. It's a, it's a fairly traditional Mill Hill kit. So you get the, uh, isn't he cute? Oh, he's so cute. And I love these. You can finish these off with a magnet on the back and stick them on the fridge. They're so cute. So I, in my drawer over there, I have a half, it's actually it's three quarters finished. Uh, Mill Hill, it's a sheep in an egg, like an Easter egg. I started it like three years ago. I went to finish it a while ago and I couldn't find a beading needle, so I put it back in the drawer and there it has stayed. So I need to get that out and finish it because that's how what I would like to, I'd like to put a magnet on it and put it on the fridge for Easter. Maybe this year is the year. We shall see. So congratulations, Kathy. You, I will send that out in the mail to you. It comes with everything that you need inside. Uh, next up was uh, email number 18, who was Vicki Benyo. And Vicki, you are the lucky winner of the um, Little House Needleworks Dear Diary Julia Flynn pattern. And this adorable pattern, I feel like I've said the word adorable like a hundred times today. Note to self, find a different word. This lovely pattern is yours. And this comes with the key charm that you'll need for finishing. Sorry, I couldn't get it to focus on the key. So I'm just showing you a blurry little blob in the corner there. So that's, a, that's actually the best it's probably focused is way back here. So there you go. There's a little key there. It's a little charm that goes on the pattern there. So congratulations, Vicki Benio. And that is it for the extra patterns that I had to send out. Next up, uh, I have, so I have three more prizes. The next prize was donated by my friend Dawn of the Codependent Knitters podcast. She also has a project bag business that you can find at Knits Best Thing. And you're going to hear some crinkling because I have kept her project bag in the plastic that she gave it to me in so that it would remain crisp and clean and fresh. Um, so this is what you're getting. It is a beautiful, um, so it's obviously the project bag is folded in half and it's got a wedged bottom on the bottom there and a notions pouch with these adorable corners, corner, little corner pockets there. They're not pockets, but I think of them as like, you know, little corner pockets. Does that make sense? This beautiful teal and orange fabric. Um, okay. So this was the winner chosen for this. This was email number 36, who turned out to be Deanna Walter, who is Darling Whimsy Designs on Etsy. I'm sure many of you know her. She is also Tuxy Twin Stitches on YouTube. So Darling Whimsy, <clears throat> who I know is Canadian. So I am happy to be sending this out east to Deanna. Congratulations, Deanna. This prize is for you. And I know Dawn's sewing, it's impeccable. You will love it. And Dawn's a good person. If you're looking for another, sorry about the crinkling. If you're looking for another knitting podcast, The Codependent Knitters, um, it's just nice to put them on while I'm, while I'm knitting and, or, or sewing or stitching. It's just like having company in my house. Always a fun time. Okay, so last but not least, I have two Lucy Calcutt charts. These are the samplers that I just showed you from Krista Gramer who designed them. Her business name is Just Stitching Along. These are so cute. They're not cute. They're not adorable. They're beautiful. <sighs> okay, now before I announce the two winners, I will be asking you if you are a sampler stitcher before these patterns are sent to you. And if you're not a sampler stitcher, I will send you a small project bag instead. I'll just make a couple more, OK? 
okay? And then what I'll do is I will pull two more names for these charts because I really want these to go to someone who's going to stitch them. And they're just so beautiful. It would really be a shame if they, if they went to someone who doesn't enjoy stitching samplers because there are lots of people who don't. I'm kind of a Heinz 57 stitcher. I stitch everything whatever it is if i like it i'll stitch it so if you're if you don't like samplers and are you ready because here it is email number 85 who is carol santos congratulations carol and email number eight who was donna gibson congratulations carol and donna i will be emailing you to find out if you are sampler stitchers and you would love to receive these patterns and then i will send your email your mailing address onto Krista who will mail you a copy of your very own chart. They're beautiful. They are absolutely beautiful. The birds on here are they're just stunning. <sighs> okay. That was a lot of prizes. So I need a little bit of time to get everything organized. I still have a I have a pile of other giveaways to still send out as well. So I'm hoping, I'm really going to try hard to get all of the giveaways sent out by the end of this week. That is my goal. However, I am also working on a few new bags for the shop, as well as a very special collaboration with Michelle Bendy that's coming out on February 1st. So. Shop update. If you don't care about the shop update, then we can say goodbye now and I will see you on Friday for Friday off the grid. Um, I just have a few, few, uh, you know, different things to talk about for the shop. Not too much though. I have this, the, the small project bag that I'm sending that I'm giving away. As I mentioned, I've tucked a few in the shop as well. Uh, I wanted to, extol the virtues of this size of project bag for a few minutes because I'm actually going to start putting more variety of this size of bag in the shop because I've been noticing more and more that I love using this bag. So mine is the one I use all the time and I, I'm, I'm ready to add a second one into rotation actually. So uh, this is my spools one. This one is still up on the site as well. The, the little spools have sayings like tightly wound and uh, what was the other one? Nimble, measure twice, cut once. It's just, it's a lovely, lovely fabric. Uh, and this size has a very special project in it, but it's secret stitching and it has something to do with the Michelle Bendy release that's coming out and actually I haven't started it because what I would like to do is I would like to wait and do a stitch along with uh, those of you who would like to join me in stitching Michelle's pattern because there's going to be a pattern surprise it's a collaboration with Michelle Bendy it's going to be a pattern and a few other goodies from me uh, so I can't show you what the pattern is but I can show you that I'm all ready to go I'm all ready to stitch it so Michelle has actually sent me a small piece of the fabric that she called for, that she asked for in her pattern, but you can stitch it on whenever you want. I just, she spoiled me a little bit and sent me a piece of fabric. Uh, this is a color and cotton, uh, I want to say it's River Rock. Hold please, let me just check the pattern because I want to get the name right. Yeah, River Rock. It's an 18 count Ada in River Rock from Color and Cotton. So I have it all loaded up on my Q-Snap. I am ready to go. I have, I pulled all my threads. See, this shows you how mismatched I am. I have my threads in a Christmas Notions pouch because like I told you last week, I tend to keep the seconds. This one, I, I had a problem with the zipper in this one. So my Notions tote doesn't match my thing, but if you purchase them for me, I don't actually, I don't sell a notions pouch with a small one, but I can always add one on. If you want one, just let me know. But I don't sell them that way, if that makes sense. But I've got all of my, I should, because actually, that's how I use it. 
Maybe I will. I'll offer them both ways. Sorry, I'm thinking out loud. I, and I also have my, oh, I can show you the colors. There's no reason why I can't show you the colors. So I'm going to be using my <laughs> Christmas tree, thread keep. Um, so those are some of the colors that I preloaded onto my Christmas tree thread keep there. And a few of the other colors, let's see. Oh, look at those. So can you see? Okay, so all, all of that to say that noisy, noisy cars out there. If you hadn't really taken a close look at these small size, they're actually really convenient because what I do is this holds everything inside it. Pattern, notions pouch with all my threads, scissors, fully loaded eight inch Q-snap, square Q-snap. There's still plenty of room to spare. You can see, you know, it's not stuffed or anything. And then this is my Red House Sampler project bag. And I've put a few more of these Amish bags in the shop. And also someone left me a comment and said that they're friends with the designer of this Amish Life fabric. How fabulous is that? I love this fabric. That is so cool. And thank you for telling me that. I, th I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, so the Amish Life bag, I've popped a few more in the shop. I've got some mediums and some large flats only, no wedge totes. And so this is my, uh, oh, and it comes with a quilty notions pouch. It's not quilted. I just think of that as like a quilt block. You know what I mean, right? I think I've said that a lot today too. You know what I mean, right? You know what I mean? I was saying it in a flute choir too. I'm like, why, why does that happen? Why do you have certain phrases that some days you say 10 times and other days you would never say them? Anyways. So I now have two, it's like a Matryoshka doll. There. So that's my, that's all my stuff for my Red House sampler. And I have another, I have a notions pouch in there for the Red House sampler, but my, that project is on scroll rods and I keep my scroll rods together in a, in a cubby, kind of like this, but it's on the other side and they're all, they're all together on the other side. So, um, I just wanted to kind of show off that small size because I don't talk about it and a lot and they're really sweet and very, very useful. So there's more of these in the shop. There will be more of this size, uh, different prints coming up. Okay, so these two are in the shop, but they're prints that you've seen before. Now I wanted to show you the print that I'm going to be working with. Uh, sorry, Nicholas just came home, so I just wanted to get him sorted out. And uh, Luna as well, who's always she is always over the moon when Nicholas comes home from school. Um, it's hard to <laughs> hard to contain her. Uh, she's uh, she's put on about nine pounds since we adopted her. She's filled out. She was on the skinny side when we adopted her, and uh, so she's put on about nine pounds, maybe a little less. I'm trying to convert kilograms to pounds. Anyways, she's put on, she's filled out a little bit. She's, I mean, she's very healthy. She looks great. She's not, because the danger is you don't want dogs to be overweight. She's not overweight. But she is a powerhouse. So when she gets excited and she starts wriggling, it's from tail to nose and the whole body just goes. And so it is an exuberant greeting. It's quite, it's quite adorable. Okay, so. Uh, those other two bags are in the shop already. The other fabric that I'm going to be working on for the rest of this week, making uh, sample bags for the shop. So I plan on making a medium flat, a large flat, and a large wedge tote. So a, the large size with a side strap on it. Uh, that fits an 11 inch square, but it's got lots of room. You know, it's got, it's got the flat bottom so you can, you can fit a lot of stuff in there. This is probably, well, I love all fabric, but I have to say this caught my eye 
Um, this is an upholstery fabric, so it is quite a heavy weight. And it's got budgies on it. So I'm gonna make some budgie bags. And I just think it is so beautiful. It is this blush pink. It's almost like a corally blush pink. And I have a gray uh, circle liner. If you wanna see what, what the liner's gonna look like, it's going to be the same fabric that I used as the Notion Tote for Ellen's Grammy bag. The Grammy bag that's in the shop, so you can see the gray fabric, it's got white circles on it. That's gonna be the liner. And then the accent or the base of the bag is going to be this khaki green twill. So there's going to be a dark bottom to it. I know it's hard to see when the bag isn't put together, but I can see it in my mind and it's glorious. <laughs> glorious as in I need one for myself. So uh, the one thing about these budgie bags, this fabric was almost twice what I normally pay for fabric. Um, I just couldn't help myself. So the cost of these bags, I think is going to be one to two dollars Canadian higher than the cost of my other bags. But it is a, this is a, this is an upholstery weight fabric. So this is, uh, this fabric means business. And it is absolutely beautiful. So if you're a fan of birds, if you love budgies, then maybe this is the bag for you. So I will put a post up on Instagram once these are live in the shop. Feel free to email me at any time. You know the sizes that I'm gonna make. Those are the only three sizes that I'm gonna make. I won't make any other custom orders for this print. So it's a medium flat, large flat, and um, actually, you know what I'll do? I'll just, no, never mind, never mind, never mind. What I'll do, since these bags aren't made yet, there'll be a pre-order, but it's only this one print and I don't have a ton of this fabric. So uh, I will start listing them probably Wednesday evening and I will put a post up on Instagram once they're live. So one of them is gonna be for me because I just think it's the most beautiful fabric. Love it. Okay, and I think, I think that is it. I think that's all. So I am going to say goodbye and I'm going to go and get this video, uh, get the video content of this today. Like I think I must have, I must have 15 to 20 different video clips that I'm going to have to try and cobble together. This today was all over the place. And then I'm going to finish sewing the rest of the raffle bags and I'm going to email all of the lucky winners. So if you didn't win a prize, I am sorry because I really do wish that I could send everyone a thank you, um, something in the mail. I wish I could send you a little prize. Um, but I do want to again say thank you for donating money directly to Muscular Dystrophy Canada. It was a phenomenal, uh, you know, we raised $5,600. Um, I am supposed to take a screenshot with, I don't know, Megan, the fundraising coordinator, coordinator at MDC wants a photo, something that she can put on uh, Facebook to celebrate that we raised so much money. And I'm okay with, I, I, I don't know, this is one of those things where I feel really comfortable with you guys, even though I, you know, do you know what I mean? I am talking to friends right now. But if I hold up a thing and I take a picture of myself holding up a number that we raised and then I have to send that to her and she's gonna put it on her Facebook page and a whole bunch of strangers are gonna see it who I don't know. And I've got messy up hair, sewing hair and sewing clothes and you know, you invite me into your living room and we chat and we're friends, but I don't know. I, I think I'm gonna have to think about how I'm gonna take a picture, so I don't know. We'll see. Anyways, my camera's flashing at me. My battery's about to die because that's how long I've talked today. Talk, 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 talk. Ah, oh, I do love to talk. Okay, so I really am going now. 
for real. And I will see you on Friday for Friday Off the Grid. Have a wonderful week. I hope you get some stitching time. And I will see you on Friday. Take care.